Hey everyone, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the channel that talks everything Wentworth now. Before I jump in, if this is your first time to the channel, then please do not forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button. Right then, Wentworth Season 3 Episode 9 Freak Show. This is the episode where Joan is not messing around anymore. She let her emotions get the better of her in recent episodes, but I think after Vera turning on her and then overhearing Doreen making fun of her with B. Smith. That's it. No more messing around and let's progress onto Freak Show. Look away now if you don't like eyeballs. <laughs> oh, my poor Peter. He hates anything to do with eyes and eyeballs. So, uh, Wentworth really played on his fears during the show's run. The episode begins with Joan and Jodie in a creepy compromising position. And we see Joan doing her usual mental and physical torture thing towards Jodie. There is a moment where you hear Joan telling Jody how ugly she is and how can she even look at herself in the mirror. Then there's this moment where Joan is rubbing Jody's eye and asking Jody if she has the courage and then Jody starts crying out that she does have the courage and bear in mind Jody is still in the psych ward. Now this leads us on to a horrific scene and I'm talking about the moment where Bridget goes to see Jody in the psych ward and then Bridget has this horrified look on her face like you know the look of nightmares and she ends up screaming out for help and then Vera, Will and some of the other officers get there it is revealed that Jodie has done something really bad to her own eyeball the same eyeball that Joan was playing with at the start of the episode you can't make this stuff up guys when Vera does a search of the area she finds a broken pencil under Jodie's bed and just look at it oh look of that. Just, eh, uh, that is gonna hurt. Now, when Joan speaks to Bridget about the incident, Joan tries to blame her because Bridget had put a report in saying that Jody was fine to go back to general. And then Joan tells Bridget that she's been going to go and see Jody and visit her every day while she's been in the psych ward. And this comes to a little bit of a shock to both Bridget and Vera. Bridget tells Joan that her visit could have prompted her to self-harm. And <laughs> tell you what, Bridget, you ain't wrong. We learned later in the episode so that Jodie has indeed got permanent damage to her eye and it's not long before news spreads around the prison. But Joan isn't finished yet, oh no. Joan really is on one because she now targets Doreen and Nash. So Doreen comes back to Wentworth with baby Joshua. They are greeted by all of the women and they've also got like a little cute cot and nursery in the unit for her and everything is happy and dandy. Nash then comes to visit Doreen and baby Joshua and Joan is there at the visiting unit and she helps Vera do a search. Now this is when Vera discovers a bag of drugs which was clearly planted by Joan when she took his things into the other room and Nash ends up getting arrested, Doreen is then questioned and then the baby, baby Joshua, is given to Jess. Oh god. There's actually a really creepy moment in the episode where Jess ends up holding Joshua for the first time and says that he's so beautiful she could eat him. <laughs> I can remember thinking to myself, OMG, she's not going to try and eat the baby, is she? So Doreen has now been punished by the freak and Doreen is blaming B for everything. B is also getting the blame about Jodie as well. Oh, Joan, she really is playing a blinder in this episode. However, Bridget is on to Joan Ferguson and there's this really cool moment in, in where Bridget and Frankie are alone in the library and they end up sneaking in between the bookshelves and they end up talking about Joan Ferguson and Bridget is like starting to think that Joan Joan is indeed a psychopath and that B's story about the man attacking her was also real. Now their chat is interrupted when Vera walks in and I just love that moment where Bridget just spins around and she puts her 
professional face back on and just walks down towards Vera. I just love it. Now, Fletcher, he remembers that Joan tried to kill him, but he doesn't remember why. So, B ends up telling Fletcher about what happened between him and Jess in the shower block. Remember when he was like having some sexy time with her up against the wall? Well, he starts getting some flashbacks and he has a complete freak out. He then tells Vera in the staff room that he thinks he had an inappropriate relationship with a prisoner before his accident, but he also tells Vera that he's been having some psych sessions with Bridget, she's been helping him, so Vera ends up putting two and two together and getting 11, <laughs> literally. She ends up going to Joan with the information about a staff member having an inappropriate relationship with a prisoner, and at first we, the viewer, we think it's Fletcher that Vera has just reported, but it's not. Not. Vera ended up reporting Bridget and Frankie, and this absolutely makes Joan's day. Joan has wanted Bridget out of the prison for ages. Even though Vera has no proof, it still wouldn't look good for Frankie in her upcoming parole. So, if Bridget was to stick around, it could literally mess up Frankie's whole parole and she could end up in Wentworth forever. So, Bridget ends up grabbing all of her things and leaves the prison without a fight. Frankie ends up saying her goodbyes as Bridget is walking down past the yard and then Bridget ends up telling Vera just to be careful because when Ferguson goes down, she better make sure that she doesn't go down with her. Bridget also tells Vera to take a look at Jodie's file before Vera makes her report about the whole eyeball incident. So later on in the evening, when Joan Ferguson has left the prison, Vera does a little bit of snooping. She goes to Bridget's office and she reads her report on Jodie, and Bridget has quite clearly said that Joan is a psychopath and she has psychopathic flags and psychopathic tendencies. Vera then takes the broken pencil that Jodie used to harm herself and goes to Joan's office to do some more snooping. Vera then just ends up finding a pack of pencils but with one missing, the very pencil that was found under Jodie's bed. And, oh, I just love this moment. I remember having, like, a big sigh of relief when I first saw it. Vera's just there. She's holding the pencils, and the penny literally finally drops for her. You can see it. You see it in Vera's face where she's thinking... What have I done? Oh no! <laughs> it's a fantastic moment and I just love the song as well that they use in this final scene. Now with B taking all of the blame for all this basic freak show, B has a bit of a wobble and she ends up telling Max Maxine that she's going to step down as top dog. She cannot beat Ferguson. And Maxine just ends up telling B that she can't give up now, she forbids it. Maxine will not let her. So B, she ends up going to the shower block during the evening Evening, and she lays down onto the floor naked and I just gotta say B has a really nice ass <laughs> but you know the moment where B lays down on the shower floor I totally understood that for me having a bath or a shower is a form of escape a form of relaxation and a form of probably for someone like B a bit of normality where B can just forget about all of her troubles just for five minutes over to Boomer now when she discovers that Maxine has frozen some of her little sperms before she became a woman and with Doreen coming back to the prison with the baby this has sent Boomer into broodiness overload and she wants a baby and she feels that you know her, you know she can use Maxine's sperm and it's actually funny but also sweet especially the scene when Boomer chats with Maxine about it and this is the first time where Boomer actually says to Maxine that she's amazing she's completely unreal she never noticed it before and it all always, always melts my heart. Now, I don't think Maxine was too keen on this whole baby thing at this stage of the show, but as we all know, this will play out, you know, a massive storyline for quite some time. I always thought Boomer should have got pregnant by Maxine's sperm. I would have preferred that to, to Gavin. Yeah, but you know, that's a conversation for a different video. So, another fantastic episode from the wonderful ladies from Wentworth. So much going on, things bubbling away nicely. I can remember I was actually on holiday when this was first airing. I was in Benidorm and um, 
I was there, I, I can remember being in Benidorm and I was just watching the trailers because I couldn't watch the episodes until I got home and I was just so flipping excited. I think it was more excited to get home and watch the episodes of Wentworth than the actual holiday. So my favourite part of this episode would have to be the ending where the penny finally drops for Vera. I can remember thinking, yes, about friggin' time, Vera. <laughs> and my least favourite moment has to be... Joan Ferguson planting the drugs on Nash. I felt so bad for Doreen. Her life was coming together nicely and then this happens. Poor, poor Doreen. But now I want to hear some of your thoughts. What did you guys think of Freak Show? Were you grossed out by that eyeball scene? And were you cheering when Vera finally found that missing pencil? <laughs> Let me know everything, guys, in the comments box below. Okay then, guys. Well, thank you all for watching today's video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.